Aralma Ran sits on the end of a long table, facing a hollow display that shows various kinds of light vehicles produced by all species in the galaxy. This Arden is the governor of the farm world of Kolash, on the western part of the Empire. Being the governor of an entire planet, he is responsible for his defences as well, as the Imperial forces could not be stretched too thin, with the threat of other species' forces invading the Imperial space. As I have written before, we will be looking at our option for lightweight and stealthy vehicles in use for recon, on our area of forest and jungle. I suppose all of you have done some research for this meeting? Aral starts. Yes, Governor. I have looked into the Varkinian Iguana all-terrain vehicle. They're four-wheeled motor vehicles with capacity of three and a carry capacity of 120 kilograms. The downside is that the vehicle is quite wide at 1.5 meters and 4 meters in length. They also use biodiesel, which could take a lot of space for long-range missions. One tank of fuel could keep them going for 280 kilometers. They're not armed, but they do have fixed points where weapons can be attached to. One of the attendees explains as the model of the vehicle is shown on the display. They look fine for our less dense areas or even urban, but the size is incompatible for our dense forest, the governor replied. What about the Verazian? The Verazian have their bullfrog boat bike, amphibious all-terrain vehicle. Capacity is two person with carry capacity of 100 kilograms. The fuel is hydrogen cells and they can have their very far range of operation up to a thousand kilometers. But they are quite dangerous if they ran out in the field. They have free wheels with boat-like bodies which make them excellent for crossing rivers. They do have attachments for weapons such as laser fire and machine rifle. That left the humans to show us what we could get. Otherwise we'll just use our old bikes, the governor said. Clearly not pleased with the options given so far. Mr. MacDonald, I suppose your species have a vehicle we can use for reconnaissance on our remote and dense forested areas? I in fact do have them, Governor. Our vehicle runs on two things, biomass and water, which can be found everywhere. They have self-repair capability, are by slow, and could take a while to fully repair itself. The carry capacity is lesser than that of the other vehicles we have seen so far, being around 80 to 90 kilograms. And not only that, they can be fairly easy to replace and maintain. The governor's face lit up in amusement, hearing the human's description. Go on, I'm interested, the governor said, despite not yet seeing the vehicle the human described on the display. They're battle-proven by our long history, and still used today by some military and special forces for reconnaissance and scouting missions. And one of the most important factors of this vehicle is that they're EMP-proof, although they're not immune to small arms fire. All right, I'm very much interested. I want to see this incredible vehicle you've told us. The governor stood from his seat. Right this way, governor. McDonald stood alone before leading the governor and the rest of the attendees out of the room and into the field a walking distance away from the government building. Here we are, governor. McDonald stood before a fence that borders the main road and a field which is an art of his farm on the planet. Hmm? Where? I don't see any vehicles. The governor is confused as he sees nothing but a large field and many farm animals. Chucky, come here, boy! McDonald yelled towards the field before a four-legged equine gallops towards him. The governor seems displeased as he has been offered an animal instead of a proper motorized vehicle. Is this some sort of joke? I wanted a vehicle, not an animal, the governor grumbles. This is technically a vehicle, Governor. The Earth Defense Treaty Organization uses these mules for their recon and scouting mission in rugged and dense areas, and I wasn't joking when I said they're a vehicle. McDonald climbs the wooden fence before he hopped onto the animal, making it trot around the field as he wants. And they are also fairly quiet, perfect for avoiding detections. Miss Magan, could you please check what Mr. McDonald said? The Governor ordered. Yes, sir. Megan Zan replied as she types onto her tablet. What Mr. McDonald said is true, Governor. Currently, the EDTO Scout Sniper Regiments uses these animals for their scouting mission with high stealth requirements. Hmm. Very well. Mr. McDonald, how much are these animals' costs? 
the governor said after some moments of thinking. 20,000 talents per head of mule, governor. 18,000 talents for donkeys and 35,000 for horses. I will only give you the best of my herd, MacDonald said as he hopped down from his mule. You have a deal, Mr. MacDonald. I want 70 of your mules as soon as possible, the governor said before he shakes MacDonald's hand.